Hi guys, hello, it's Virtue. A quick introduction, welcome to my channel, my name is Virtue. Third year, soon to be fourth year, civil engineering student at the University of Southampton. And I have a YouTube channel, so hello, welcome. If you love videos about engineering, vlogging, internships, all that jazz, then subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have my Instagram, which is, will be up somewhere in the screen. You can also DM me, message me. I also like connect with me on LinkedIn. <laughs> I'm joking. Anyways, I thought today's video would be important to put out a video about like, how to get into engineering, especially how like it's GCSE and A-level results day soon. I think GCSE is one's next week and I'm not really sure what A-level is. And I just remember when I was getting my A-level results, I was just so scared, thinking, oh my, am I gonna make it to university? So am I gonna get into engineering? Because I, I knew my predicted grade, but then I also knew I wasn't getting my predicted grade. I was predicted A slot AA. I mean, I still going to University of Southampton, but I did not get those predicted grades. Um, so I thought it would be really good to put out a video to just explain what you, the university, like firm, insurance, clearance, um, what you need to get into like engineering. Is it really maths heavy? Do you need physics? What A-levels would, would be ideal to get into engineering and all that jazz. If that seems like something you're interested in, blah, blah. if that seems like something you're interested in, then carry on watching this video. I actually do have notes on my, ah! I have notes on my phone, but whether I stick to them is, mm. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you a bit of a run on what I did. So I did GCSEs, just the normal ones, like history, maths. I took PE, I did core science, or double science. For A-level, I took maths, physics, and product design. I took those A-levels because I knew I wanted to do civil engineering, and I thought those were the best A-levels, personally, for me, that would help me with civil engineering. Okay, so with GCSE, I wouldn't say anything, I would, for GCSE, I wouldn't say, like, the GCSE you choose will really, like, affect what you do in university. GCSE is too, early on for you to like know oh, I, I want to do these just because I'm trying to do this specific um, course at university. GCSE only relates to A level like I would suggest like if you really want to do PE A level you take P GCSE but all that jazz. So in GCSE I just did the normal one I didn't really know if I wanted to do engineering yet alone civil engineering by that time. Um, but for A-levels, that's when you kind of want to tailor it to your degree. I knew I wanted to do civil engineering, so I, I knew that, I knew maths was, maths was compulsory. Like, if you look at any of the university website, they'll be like, oh, you need to have maths and an A preferable in maths, and then you can have any other two or three A-levels. So I took maths, and I really enjoyed physics, and I thought, oh, physics might really help with engineering. And then I took product design, because product design is really hands-on, and so I was like, I knew civil engineering is going to be, like, really practical, and there's a lot of theory as well. Okay, this section is basically like uh, about what happens when you get your A-level results. It's gonna be more about A-levels rather than GCSE because I can't really remember what I did for GCSE. But with A-level, there's like, obviously you know your firm, your insurance, your firms and the university you wanna go to, hopefully, and the insurance is that if you don't get your firm, you get into your insurance. But there's also like, if you don't get either, so you end up in clearing. And clearing is basically like a way of, there's loads of unis that offer like um, degrees that you could just quickly sign up to that either, they haven't filled up the application so like maybe they have like 50 and there's only 25 so they have spaces or they've lowered the requirements so more people can go on to it and so with clearing you can get i'd say it's kind of hard to get into the i your your obviously you can't get into the main university you wanted because they rejected you respectfully and so even the course as well like you have to be open-minded you might not get into the same course you want to but that's what clearing is okay i didn't go into clearing um southampton actually lowers the requirement like every year even though it's a star a a star aa they take people with abb that's the lowest requirement so i got into um southampton um in terms of my a levels and the a levels i think would really help with um what's called civil engineering i wouldn't even say that Maths obviously is up there because why wouldn't you have to be phenomenal on maths? I don't think you have to take further maths in A level, you don't have to take further maths in GCSE. I think just having a good level of maths is fine. Um, in first year, we have we had a maths module. I felt like first year was just like, whoa, we have all these students from all these different schools all applying into the same course. We have to make sure that the maths level is on the same foundation. I feel like that's what that type of maths was. First year was a lot of like some things we covered already in A level maths, like vectors. Um, differential equations and all of that and some things are mainly covered in further maths but that maths module was basically just making sure everyone knew all the stuff that would help them for second third and fourth year so I think that was fine second year maths was a little bit different a little bit hard but it was doable because I wouldn't say my strong suit is maths I do like maths but I wouldn't say I'm like excellent at it but like second year maths was a lot of it was different maths like we haven't seen this math before these were like a lot of letter maths you know when the math doesn't have any numbers it's all like theoretical maths I can't explain it but it was it was hard but it's it's possible like 
yeah and that was the last time I saw maths so second year there was no more maths after that we moved on to third fourth year which is more like mechanics personally I can't tell you which like specific A level will take you to like would help you amazingly in civil engineering I could only give you like I could only suggest some because you it depends what range like civil engineering is massive you could go down the environmental route you could go down the like structures mechanics but obviously my top one would be maths I also say physics would help you um, I took physics but physics it doesn't play a large role in civil engineering like we had like Physics came up once in first year, dabbled, dribbled a little bit in second year and haven't seen it again in third, fourth year. It's it's more about mechanics, not like actual like the those like physics stuff you learn in A-levels. Um, geography is another good one. If you like geology, geotechnical engineering, um, or the earth stuff, um, geography is another good A-levels to take. I would also say like computer science, that helped a lot with the coding. You do code you do code in civil engineering we had two years and two different codes we learned python and then we did matlab it was matlab coding yeah i think it is so computer science would help um chemistry chemistry does actually come come up a lot and you can specific you can choose specific modules so you can avoid the chemistry route but if you did like chemistry chemistry does come up in civil engineering i just say like a lot of all these a levels do end up benefiting you in like your degree so i wouldn't get like so bogged down in fact like i need to choose all these specific a levels just make sure you're taking maths because it's a requirement in most degrees and most universities require you maths but i think at the end of the day any a levels you take you won't be at a you won't be at a loss if you don't take any specific ones if that make any sense um i know people have taken like geography maths art and they're doing so fine like it doesn't really matter what a levels you take it's just how committed and how passionate and how like motivated you are in your degree because university life and a level life or university and, and um secondary they're just completely two different separate things but yeah um now i would just suggest that if you do want to get into engineering make sure to look at if there's any scholarship schemes like your university is applying or the ic quest like institution of civil engineer has this quest scholarship which is basically like it's you have to do an application for the whole process but if you get it they'll give you like almost four grand or five grand in total over the course of your year plus you're guaranteed a summer placement with a civil engineering company and placement is really good because you know the more experience the better um success southampton has their own scholarship scheme which i'm on which also gives you the same thing as quest um so and the royal academy of engineering they have their own scholarship thing so i would say like right now we're waiting for your a level results do apply for these scholarship things because like you're entitled to them and they're giving you money and placement so apply and see how far you get into the application process and hopefully you do get in but yeah this video was just a quick chit chat about like um good luck with all your a level and gcse results don't get too drilled on the fact that like i need to take specific a levels or i didn't take the right a levels as long as you have maths as long as you know that you really want to be an engineer then that's enough to drive you through university and a little bit of hard work and i'm joking a lot of hard work the university is tiring but yeah i hope this video was interesting and give me a thumbs up if you like it